Hey guys, what's happening? Just wanted to say before the video starts that this is just going to be part one of two. The reason why part one, part one is just going to be a little bit lengthy, especially with my findings, the research that I did, and the install. Part two is just going to capture the features and the settings within the smart wheel. So without further ado, let's get this cracking. What up fam, welcome back to Wicked Whips. And from the time lapse, I got a really, really dope surprise for you today. I'm sure you saw it already. This bad boy right here, carbon fiber smart wheel, partially sponsored by Burns Auto. Uh, big shouts to Bernie, thank you so much for allowing me to show you and show the viewers the hookup and explanation and to actually make this work. And I say that because <clears throat> I don't know anybody yet um, for the company OHC that actually has this actually working for their Subaru alongside the access port. This OHC model, this company right here, uh, as of yet, I was the one, uh, while me and Bernie were conversing that, especially with the WRX models, there was a problem. So I actually figured it out and I'm about to show you how to do it. All right, guys, we're going to make this real quick. Things that you're going to need and what's in the box. So things that you're going to need, flathead screwdriver, a pick. This is very, very detrimental, especially to taking off the steering wheel. And I will show you in depth and the reason why. I know there's a video online from JD Muscle, but there's a lot of flaws in that. So you're going to need some taps. You're going to need a multimeter or a test light. Definitely a, a, a multimeter would serve you better. Uh, pry tool, <clears throat> 17 millimeter socket with an extension and a ratchet for to take off the main bolt for the steering wheel. Phillips head screwdriver, 10 millimeter wrench for to take off the negative terminal of your battery. <clears throat> Wire strippers. Now, oh, almost forgot this. You're definitely gonna need this. This is the exact extension that I use. You can pick this up on Amazon. It's gonna be in the description and I'll explain why you need the extension later. <clears throat> now what's in the box? You have your Bluetooth module right here and you have your OBD connector right here with the pigtail if you wanted to plug in your access port, but I'll show you why there's a huge flaw in that. You have your white wire here to build power for your Bluetooth module. And last but not least, oh, don't forget, you have your instructions, your guidebook and everything like that. And now you have, you come to your wheel. This wheel was fully customized for me by Burns Auto. Look at that red carbon going into that green stitching. And then you have the red stitching going into that green carbon. Look at that. Such a freaking dope piece. Now guys, this steering wheel, I did contact the company. These LED chipsets right here, they light up to tell you like RPMs and stuff like that, especially when you first turn on the car. They're supposed to be functioning as turn signals and uh, wheel rotational spin, but I contacted the company. It is not programmed for that yet. They don't have that functionality with that yet. So it's not gonna function with your turn signals or hazards. So it is what it is at that point. But other than that, such a freaking dope piece but it does measure rpms all consumption well rpms are your engine speed your current vehicle speed battery voltage water temperature oil temperature uh boosts vacuum it's it's pretty freaking dope and as you can see already it's definitely matching everything else so guys hold on to your seats you're gonna have a lot to learn the reason why you're gonna have a lot to learn is as I said, I actually had to contact the company because 
no there's no video out there showing this brand OHC their smart wheel working alongside the Cobb access port none of them are because of just functionality and hookup so I actually figured it out and we're about to delve into that and I'm about to show you all the ins and outs and how to hook this up how to connect everything it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of work but we're gonna get through it if anybody who got this stuff from Burns Auto definitely share this video I'm about to show you how to make this shit work hold on all right guys so the first thing you're gonna do loosen this bad boy up disconnect it and put something in between it so this does not touch your terminals but just put something where or if it if it's not going to move or whatever that's fine make sure this does not touch the terminal again for the rest of the duration while you're installing it why because we're going to be messing around by taking off the part with the airbag and let me tell you you don't want, want that shit going off in your face on accident just saying this should happen to me before in a car accident and let me tell you it's not fun so if you want you might as well just have some random person come up to you and punch you in the face if you really want to feel how it feels you know what i'm saying so now let's get down to all right guys so i'm gonna have my nephew helping me out today he's holding my wheel he has to help me because i'm gonna have to obviously use both of my hands to show you certain things so he's gonna be holding my camera for me so now this is how the extension looks now guys once you install your wheel and everything and your smart box and all of that stuff there's a button right here that you hold down for anywhere from like three to five seconds until this blue led starts blinking once it blinks and your steering wheel has power what happens is it pairs automatically to the wheel the good thing about it is once you disconnect the wheel like so let's say while I was doing all the testing to make sure that this can actually work and it's functional with the access port, I actually had it connected to a separate battery outside of the car and I paired it up like that. So you're not gonna see me going through the pairing process, you're gonna have to do it. I had to pair it to make sure there was functionality. So I'll actually put a video clip of that that I actually sent to my boy Matt while we were doing like certain testing and whatnot. And also I said, Matt, shouts out to my boy Matt up in PA, I actually reached out to him because he was uh, one of the people who bought a wheel like this from Burns that comes from OHC and pretty much it was kind of like, you know, he doesn't have the functionality of running it alongside his access port so he can only run one or the other. I do think though, I was the one that actually figured out as I said with uh, Bernie while I was speaking to him months and months ago, I think it's the WRXs with their hookup that's why they have issues uh the stis i'm going to show you how to definitely make this work with this splitter uh matt also has a splitter and his doesn't it doesn't work for him as well i don't know why i think it's like a wrx functionality i i don't know if it's the way uh the cars are wired or what but it's what it happens is it, it fights with the wheel of which device gets preference to use the OBD port. You get what I'm saying? So he can only either use his wheel or his access port, which kind of sucks. But big shouts to Matt. Uh, we definitely did a lot of brainstorming, especially like four o'clock in the morning sometimes of what test that we were gonna do next. So big shouts to him. Anyway, so this, the reason why I got this. Now this OBD, this is gonna hook right up into your port your access port plugs right here and this long extension your module for your wheel is going to get plugged into that you are not going to use this to plug in your access port because this is literally pigtailing off of this and there is not enough power so if you do not get a splitter to split the current evenly this will not function properly this will not let your access port work with the wheel at all at all at that point this is mainly just a hookup like a scan tool for simple reading yes your access port is like a scan tool but way way more advanced so definitely that's why it doesn't work because it's fighting it's they're both are fighting for the signal you feel me i know it's a lot of information but just bear with me and you're going to understand what i'm talking all right about. guys so once you disconnect your negative terminal 
we're gonna have to start disassembling this wheel. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is take this main hub off right here. This is the portion with the airbag. This is the reason why you disconnect that negative battery terminal. Because let's say you forgot and you make some mistake or something happens, this shit can go off in your face. Don't want that. So now, <clears throat> you have three holes. Now there's a lot of videos on YouTube showing you how to do it for a Subaru and I'll show you why there's a lot of flaws. Because all they say is, okay, you're gonna take this flathead. Now there's three holes you have to insert it in. There's one over here. Let's see if I can get some, there it is. one right here. Taking some time to focus. There's one right here. And now there's one underneath right here. Focus, 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 there we go, right here. Now, the flathead can definitely work for this one, and I'll show you the reason why. Because what you're doing is, you're literally trying to get in there for, let's see. You're literally trying to poke at a, a very thin piece of metal in there. See that? And, and I'm gonna show you why. Okay. So now, this is the reason why. When you put this flathead in this hole, everyone makes you think you just gotta go up and poke at a poke at a piece of metal. That is further from the truth. You literally have to angle it and try to get, see what a flathead is right here? You have to get it behind this metal right here. See that metal? It's very hard. So now this is the reason why you need a pick. Because now when you put that in here, and look, boom. That's how easy you get it with the pick. The pick goes right through, right through. And it's easy. See what I'm saying? So when they tell you, oh, you just take a flathead, let me tell you something right now. They were probably fishing for like 20 minutes with that bullshit. So when you take this flathead, you're not just going up. You have to come at an angle towards you. And it's very hard, look. It's very hard to feel that metal and to get that flat part of the screwdriver behind the metal. Because I'm actually looking at it, that's why I can guide the screwdriver. The first time I tried this with a flathead screwdriver, that was the most frustrating thing ever. And I'm like, huh, why can't somebody just get an angled pick to do the work for them? And now, that's how easy the pick is to, to, to do it, literally. So that is what you have to do. The bottom hole, is easy to do with a flathead because all you're doing is pushing up. So this side right here, the passenger side, you're moving it towards the center. You're moving it towards the center. The driver's side or the left side right here, you're moving that also towards the center. You're moving it towards the center. And then the bottom one, that one right here, you're pushing it up towards the center. So all these clip tabs, you're just getting it moved towards the center to release this hole that they have on this part right here. One, two, three. And that is how you do it. You saw me show you about the metal pieces towards the center before to release these connecting points. So now, another good thing about having a pick, or you can use a trim removal tool, the way to get this off, you insert this right here, pry that up, pry these up just like so, and that, pull them off. So those clips release the hole that they have on the inside, so they release the lock, and you can just pull them up. Now, right here, this right here, this gray wire, this is your horn cable not the red wire in some videos. So there's a little lock right here. I'm gonna show you. This right here, it's a little lock. You press it and then pull, and you can get this tab out, and that's it. This is the whole piece right here. Very, very important. You don't have to mess with this yellow one. So <clears throat> make sure you release the tabs first, these little yellow tabs up top. Then you can pull them up and just release this horn cable right here. All right, guys, so next part of the mission, 
right here. So this is your airbag wiring right here. And this wire right here is for is connected into your clock spring right here. So this, these black pieces right here, they all join, they're all part of the same connection that merges in the middle. And they're inside some clips, just loosen up, just press the clips with your fingers, pull the wires out one by one and disconnect. Just press this tab right here and disconnect those wire or this harness right here from the clock spring. Now, once you disconnect that from the clock spring, you can either press this tab down here. This is for your cruise control. You could press it and release it, or I'll just show you another way how to get it off in a second. So now this is where your 17 millimeter and ratchet come in. You take your 17 mil. Now remember, if I didn't state this before, make sure your wheel is straight when you do this. So because the spline has little teeth, you want it to go back the same way you took it off. So now once you break this nut for the 17 mil, you unscrew it, but you're not gonna unscrew it all the way. I think this is like the one thing that some of these videos actually got right. You don't unscrew it all the way because what's gonna happen is some of these wheels are freaking like stuck in there. So now you're gonna have to give it some type of force and you don't want this wheel coming back and hitting you in the goddamn face. You get what I'm saying? You don't want that shit coming back and hitting you in the face. All right, guys, so once you get your steering wheel loose, now you can unscrew this bolt right here, put it aside. Now, once you put it aside, slowly take this off, route your airbag wires right through there. And now the wheel is out. All right, so once you have the wheel out, flip this bad boy over, get your needle nose pliers this brown piece right here just squeeze the two ends of it just push the cruise control module through so now the cruise control is loose so now you can just press this tab right here and take it out okay so now once you have the cruise control unplugged flip the wheel over real quick and these pieces right here you just start you can take it off, just pry it off with your hands. Bam, bam. Hey guys, I forgot to mention that I had this screw off while I was previously testing the wheel. I'm gonna mention it in a couple minutes. As simple as it is. And now, once you turn the wheel back over, you have three Phillips head screws here, here, and here. Get that off. Now, when the new wheel comes on, the new wheel comes with a ring terminal, we're gonna be grounding it off right over here on this screw. All right, guys, so you saw once you take off those three screws, you literally pull the entire harness off. Now, once you put the harness off, you take the new wheel and literally put everything back in reverse. Very, very, very simple. Put everything back in reverse, and I'm gonna just time lapse this for you so you don't have to really uh, watch all of this stuff. But you're literally putting everything back in reverse. Super, super, super easy. All right, all right, guys. Before I do a time lapse, make sure this right here, where you got to put this screw back, as I told you before, you're gonna be grounding it off. So they actually provided you with a ring terminal already on the ground. It's literally gonna go here, you put the screw in, and that's your ground right there. Make sure it's metal to metal, make sure there's nothing surrounding like any type of rubbers or anything like that. So if there's any type of rubber, like this side right here, see how this side is some rubber and stuff like that, make sure you peel it off or cut it off or whatever, make sure there's nothing, and then you put the ring terminal. The good thing is the ring terminal is nice and small, so once you put it in right there, it'll just be touching metal to metal which is perfect. All right, so once I screw this in, I'm gonna be time-lapsing and putting the wheel back together right onto the clock spring right here, and then I'll show you about the wiring. Guys, I know you hear me say clock spring. That's a device that allows you to turn the steering wheel while still making an electrical connection between the wheel the airbag, horn, and any other electrical device. Hi guys, I actually forgot to mention, this screw has been over here 
uh, the entire time because I actually had this wheel on here first before I put back my old steering wheel. Remember, I had to do all the testing and stuff like that. So this screw I actually took out and left out the entire time. It literally goes right here. So before you pull off this plastic piece to make it look all easy, this screw has to come out. So it's three screws from the back and this one in the front right here. I'm just gonna put that back right there and I'll screw it in, but pretty much that's where that screw goes. So that screw would be in there to hold down this plastic cover, all right? So just uh, as a little side note. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are gonna reconnect the negative terminal to the battery. Now, we don't have to worry about the airbag going off because it's still disconnected. So now it's time for the connection of the OBD ports and the testing of the wires so you know what to do. Now, as I said, this portion right here is gonna be connected to the main. So we're gonna take out, you know, pull off your access port connection right here. Put this in, the access port connection hooks up in here. And then this portion right here is for your wheel connections. Okay, so I'm just gonna time lapse that real quick and we're gonna jump to the next phase. Alrighty guys, so now the three wires that we get with this wheel, we have a blue right here, we got a red, and we have that black wire which we already grounded off. That's pretty simple, self-explanatory. So the red will be for the 12 volts of power. The blue, the reason why they give you this blue, as per their directions, that blue right here, you gotta connect it to, you were supposed to connect the blue to this spade connector right here on the airbag, right here. And then this red wire, you would have to connect it right into the gray wire, but that's in some vehicles. The reason why you would do that is to build up the 12 volts, because not a lot of cars have that full 12 volts running to the steering wheel. So you would actually have to build up the power for the wheel. In this case, we do not have to worry about this blue wire. So there you go. Now, the most important thing, the reason why in a lot of these cars, this OHC does not work. If you notice right here, how I connected everything up right here, you have your OBD model from OHC connecting to the splitter. You have your pigtail right here, which you're not gonna use. You are not gonna use this unless you're connecting like some type of scan tool. Do not connect your OBD to this because it will not work for your access port. Now, this white wire right here, as per the instructions of OHC, hopefully this thing can focus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, focus. Anyway, I'll drop it down anyway, it doesn't matter. They call it a speaker supporting cable. They want you to go behind the steering column, loosen up the steering column, and there's a purple wire, it's even on Burns' website. There's a purple wire back here. It's the downside of the clock spring. So this is the front and the back. So the back of the clock spring, there's a purple wire that you hook up this white wire to as to boost the power of this box. Guys, we are not going to use this. When I did my testing, I powered on the ignition when I first was testing this. Watch this. Power on, power on. The access port came on, the blue light came on for the box, and I'm like, wait. It didn't dawn on me that the shit was actually working, because you don't need to start the car. If both of these were fighting for power, you would see the access port on, and then flicker back, that it's trying to find a power source or a connection, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this box would have preference. That's the crazy part. Now, as you can see, I have a tap right here because they want you connecting it to a, you know, that downside of this wire. And what ended up happening is as soon as I connected it to that power source, guess what was happening? The access port started flickering back and forth. Then I was like, wait, we don't need to build power because from the splitter, it's getting an even amount of power. So guess what? I wrapped that bad boy back up, but it just didn't dawn on me for a good six hours while I was doing the testing because I was doing this testing like 2.30 in the morning. So that's what ended up happening because I was up all night trying to figure this out. Remember OCD? 
So that's what ended up happening. And it didn't dawn on me that the shit actually was working. And as I told you guys before, I already paired my steering wheel by holding down this button. So now on to the testing of the steering wheel and I'll show you the anomaly I ran into. All right guys, so this is the part of the video where we're gonna start testing some wires. So you're gonna need your multimeter. But obviously at the end of this, I'm gonna show you why. So you're probably not gonna need it, but I'm gonna show you why. So you notice I have, ever since the beginning of the video, I have a tap on this red wire right here. So now you guys know there's, you know, there's videos out, you know, JD Muscle put out a video talking about tap into or solder from the red wire that, which is the horn wire. So you have to solder or tap your hot wire from the wheel to this red wire for your horn. Guys, this is not a horn wire at all. This wire is not a horn wire and I'll show you why. So my battery is connected, right? If I put this clock spring, if I put this module back in here, clamp that bad boy back in and I, that is your horn wire. This wire right here, that's your horn wire. So this is the top wire, okay? This is the top wire right here. So the top hole would, will match the top pin in here. So now, watch this. You take your multimeter, put it on DC voltage. That's the V up here with the dashes and the straight line over it. Not the one with the squiggly line, guys. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna ground my multimeter right here. This is a perfect ground, this entire wheel, this bone part right here. You ground it, and what you're gonna be doing is touching every little prong. So now we know this gray wire is the top one right here all the way to the right top. Focus right here. Now, if I touch that, what do you see? 12.3938 volts. If I let it go, so that is the horn wire right there. Okay, that is the horn wire while the car is off. So that is a permanent connection to the horn. That is the reason why if I go like this, oh, if the clock string was connected and I tap the ground, the horn went off as you saw before. Obviously it's disconnected so it won't go off, but it's still a constant 12 volts running to that pin. So now what we're gonna do is Focus right here. I'm gonna tap each wire. And you're gonna see that nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening, nothing is happening. So that's what, so now I pretty much touched every wire, every pin, I'm sorry. Not on this side, but in the middle where this harness goes. And the only 12 volts is from this wire right here. So now, the other day, I pretty much gave up because now I'm like, shit. I thought that video that JD Muscle showed was the power wire. And come to my realization, it, it's not. Otherwise, it would have 12 volts. Now check this out. I'm gonna turn the ignition on. This, this red wire is the third wire in, or the third pin in. Hold that. And let's test the third pin in. Point down there. It's measuring like some ridiculous numbers, like 30 something millivolts. So now I'm like, shit, what the hell does that mean? I'm like, I'm not, you know, now I'm, I'm shook. I'm like, I'm wondering what the hell is gonna happen with that. So now, come to find out, when I gave up, I was testing everything throughout the day. And I normally have my lights on auto. So now, got my lights on auto, but it was broad daylight. So what was happening was I literally gave up and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna test this stuff one more time because they said this is the power wire. But come to find out, as I said before, again, this is not, this red wire is not a power wire. This is the same wire that's running here and here. Not a power wire. Guess what? All of a sudden, darkness came upon me and I'm testing the wire and I'm like, so now I'm gonna mimic this as darkness. Testing this third pin, focus down there. Now what happened? All of a sudden I got about close to 12 volts. 
my ignition has been on for a while guys that's why the voltage is dropping because I have all my gauges and stuff on it now isn't that some weird shit so guess what I guess what I came to the realization of since I have my lights on auto and it got dark all of a sudden my headlights came on and that's what powered this red wire so now I literally just mimicked darkness so I turned my lights on tested the wire in front of you guys and that's what gave me the voltage so this red wire is for it lights up your steering wheel that is what it's for it's not a power wire it's for it controls your lighting so what's gonna happen is during the daylight if your car is on auto this wheel is not gonna power up unless you put in your parking lights on or your regular lights on during the day as soon as dusk hits and your sensor over there picks up that there is darkness it's gonna power the wheel on that's what's gonna happen so you can run it either way you can leave it on auto where you're not dri where you're driving during the day and there's no power to the wheel or you could turn your parking lights or headlights on and give the wheel power or if you're driving at night you leave it on auto and guess what it'll light up regardless and I'll show you an example in this. Hi guys, so I just started up the car because I wanted to recharge the battery real quick. Now I'm gonna test that third pin with this red wire again. Watch this. So now while I'm touching it, look at the gauge. The gauge is displaying what? 14.2 volts. Now look what the voltmeter is displaying. 14.17. Do you see what I'm saying? So, and the lights are on. So it's showing you exactly what voltage the battery is putting out because that is what is because now that i put on the lights the correct voltage is going towards this red wire or that third pin you get what i'm saying so that's the only reason why because my lights are on now that's why that pin got power to power and so that is what's going to power the reel all right guys so what do we learn from all of this stuff that sometimes you can't believe everything you see when not enough research is done. I just wanted to tell you a couple notes real quick. You'll see right here this word remark or remark. ABC points indicate different vehicle diagnosis point. Remark or remarks or notes. So pretty much everything here, they meant like a note. Different vehicle, different cable. You get what I'm saying? So as you see right here, the red wire or the power wire for the wheel and this blue wire right here was used to what is supposed to build power but that's for different makes and models it does not work with this model so this blue wire we don't have to worry about and obviously guys as you saw that white wire in this is negligible so that's what's going to help this whole scenario work so now as you could see it works with the access port and i'm going to do a time lapse where I'm connecting everything back up but one of the most important tools that you are gonna need for this that I forgot to mention is this bad boy right here you are gonna need a torque wrench because you need to tighten down this to 29 foot pounds that's where you're gonna need to tighten that down to okay so don't forget that you're gonna need to torque it down 29 foot pounds you get what I'm saying as I said before um, with the company OHC they don't really have to care you know about the access sport now can they make a lot of money if they make the stuff to coincide with the access sport for the subarus absolutely they don't really have to care about it though because they're making different smart wheels for a lot of makes and models foreign domestic the whole nine so their job is really not to worry about access sport functionality so to speak can they make more money off of it yes as i told you before i reached out to them about this and they had no clue especially what to do when it comes to the access port okay but i figured it out it's all good it'll help you guys connect this stuff up and that's it so now i'm just gonna hook everything back up guys don't forget make sure you disconnect your battery terminal again disconnect the battery terminal torque this down to 29 foot pounds and then you can wire everything back up all right, all right guys the install is complete the negative cable is back on the battery everything is tightened down look how dope that shit looks this right here use some trusty velcro to put the box right on the side over here just a heads up guys this box comes with a tiny knock sensor built into it so place it somewhere when you start the car it'll vibrate the box 
to send a signal to the wheel. Everything is ran underneath and zip tied neatly. And I'm thinking that this USB and micro USB ports, those are for any type of software updates. So you could just bring the laptop in the car, plug it in right there. So everything is just easy to get to. And now I'm gonna show you what I was talking about before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back this up into the garage and show it to you in the dark. All right guys, we're in the garage and I'm gonna leave my lights on auto. So now once I power on the ignition, there's the wheel. Start it real quick. Access board is going to come on and work alongside the wheel. Here we go. All right, open the garage. All right, I'm going to pull out of the garage real quick. All right, move. I'm going to pull out of the garage, and once daylight hits the sensor, the wheel should turn off, or will turn off. There we go, wheel turned off. Now, that's what I was telling you before. That wire, that red wire, is pretty much the light motion sensor wire. It powers on, it's for the lights, that's how you get the 12 volts. Now if I turn this to my parking lights on, now we got action again. So now the wheel is gonna operate as normal. See the RPMs are right there? Obviously, it's flickering with the camera because it's trying to catch the frames per second. So guess what? It's working with the access port. Everything is good. You know what I'm saying? Guys, you know what to do. Definitely like, subscribe, comment. All right, guys. So in closing, hope you guys learned something today. Thank you guys for joining me, sticking with me through this whole video. Again, it was my pleasure doing this unboxing and install. Definitely like, subscribe, comment share this video again guys this is for the sti i really thought that this would have just been a gigantic expensive ornament and you know obviously the carbon is is nice and everything but you want the functionality of running your wheel getting the benefits out of it getting the flashiness out of it along with your cob access port so guys obviously this stuff works all the stuff is going to be in the description again thank you for joining me i really appreciate the time you guys took to hang out with me today and i hope you guys learned something all right and i will talk to you guys soon as you can see no lights or anything of the sort no check engine lights nothing like that everything is working as it should full functionality as you guys seen this and i will talk to y'all soon